I'm Laurie Marie, and I have been asked by a lot of people to share my story about a group, a cult that I was in for 12 years. And there's a lot of questions people have. Um, I'm breaking this series down into chunks because there's no simple way to explain any of this. And those of you who know me know what group I'm talking about. If you don't, hopefully this will be helpful for you to either get out of a group that's not healthy or to avoid getting in one. And I won't be naming names in this series, just simply for my own protection. And uh, it doesn't really matter if you know who I'm talking about, you know who I'm talking about. Um, so I'm going to start today with this question that I find actually very uh, disturbing and almost abusive. And I know that uh, people that have said this to me don't mean it that way, including my own uh, doctor who said, <laughs> how could you fall for this? Um, it's actually really insensitive to say that to someone who has just gotten out of a abusive relationship or a cult or any kind of situation where they were conned or co coerced or deceived because they're already feeling really stupid, right? So instead of thinking, gosh, how could you ever fall for this? I would never fall for that. I've never fallen for a cult. I'm immune to cults. Instead of having that perspective, I invite you to think about where you have possibly or could be deceived, conned, scammed, lied to, and put yourself in the shoes of that time that you fell for someone's lie. And imagine the slippery slope where you believe one lie and then you find yourself slowly over time being deceived into giving away a decade or more of your time, energy, and money to something that wasn't what you thought that it was. So this is a quote from Kathleen Mann, who's a cult theorist, and it is, no one joins a cult. No one joins a cult. People delay leaving organizations that misrepresented themselves. So when you are either looking at getting out of something or wondering how someone didn't get out of something sooner or how did they ever fall for it in the first place, remember, no one joins a cult, okay? They delay leaving organizations that misrepresented themselves. So cults actually exploit the best parts of people. So, you know, if you ask someone, like adults would freely choose to be indoctrinated and, and exploited, right? No one does that. No one chooses. And choice is going to be a big uh, touchy subject that I bring up because it's, it's, uh, it's just been used. Uh, it's been turned into a weapon. It's been weaponized against people in this cult that I left. It still is because they say, oh, it's just a choice. It's not just a choice when you're being lied to. It's not just a choice when you are systematically deceived and coerced into something. Um, and, you know, cults are really good at exploiting good things in people. So if you are a little bit optimistic, hopeful, maybe a little naive, maybe you believe the best in people, cults love to prey on you because that they can use to their advantage. Um, so this, I'm going to go over six points and I got this breakdown from a, uh, podcast called Conspirituality, and it was just a really succinct way of sort of doing Cult 101. And uh, I'll also link to that and some of the experts that I've studied since I got out almost a year ago. And I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a um, scholar, ac academic. I mean, I have been researching this for like less than a year. And I think that more than anything, my experience having been in and getting out and then learning what happened to me uh, is what I'm is what qualifies me to speak about that. Um, there are definitely scholars that devote their entire um, academic life to researching cults. And 
I will reference them and also talk about how it applies to my situation with specific examples, because I think that is unique. And a lot of people get value from hearing like how this stuff is actually applied in, in the real world, not just how does it come out of a textbook in theory. So um, some of those cult models are the mind model. That's from um, Kathleen Mann, although she may have gotten it from someone else. Uh, so the M-I-N-D, mind model, the bite model from Stephen Hassan, B-I-T-E. Uh, Yanya Lalich has a uh, system for talking about cults, and I've worked with her and really um, appreciate her like candor and straightforward approach. And she actually helped me get out of this cult. Uh, Robert Cialdini wrote a book called Influence and the Power of Persuasion and just hearing all the ways that people are influenced and persuaded, not just in cults, but in advertising and marketing uh, is really informative. And also Lifton has done, I think, an 18 point assessment on uh, thought reform. And uh, so I will link to some of these things, which is, uh, as I said, people that have actually studied this and talk about it. And where I'm coming from is actually more of a personal experience of it. And then understanding and still trying to understand like how, back to the first thing, <laughs> how could you fall for this? So I was in for 12 years. I worked my way up to the top of this organization or near the top, as near as I could get. And then um, I met my husband inside the group. We had uh, twins. They're seven years old now. They basically, we were this like poster child, poster family of this group. And because we had met inside of it and had kids and we brought them up, you know, inside the cult, they used us and exploited our, I don't know, good looks and family dynamic, you know, as saying like, look, this is what, you know, you can be like if you do our classes and join our group. So that's just a little example of how they will, um, they will treat you good when it serves them. And then uh, as I as I knew it would happen because I studied cults before I left, I know what happens when you leave and you speak out is they quickly turn the tables. Uh, one of the other episodes, if you call it, uh, we're going to talk about Darvo, which is what they did to me where they turned on me and, and uh, attacked me when I left and, and spoke out. And sorry for another time, but... Yeah. When you leave a cult and you're a whistleblower, by the way, um, there's no real benefit. Like why, what, <laughs> what benefit do I have in, in lying about my experience and uh, coming out and speaking out against them? Like it would be much easier just to, which most people do just leave, you know, which what they wanted me to do is just leave, you know, go live your life. Just don't bother us. And I'm like, no, you guys are still to this day, currently active and abusing people, indoctrinating people into your deceptive organization and you're ruining lives and families. And no, I'm not going to just sit here and be quiet. So, all right. Um, back to no one chooses to be indoctrinated and exploited. They're not choosing it. They are being groomed over time into confusing abuse with love while losing outside perspective and resources. So one of the things that cults do, and this apply, all of this really applies to abusive relationships as well. So one-on-one -on -one dynamics, for instance, with a narcissist, uh, same thing. So you're being groomed into confusing abuse with love. When I used to get up in class and ask a question and the leader would assault me verbally, um, and what I know now is I would dissociate and leave my body and just like sort of take this abuse. That's a trauma response. Somehow along the way, I got this idea that that was really uh, strong, vulnerable. You get rewarded for things like that. So you think this person is doing that because they care about you. They actually have your best intentions at heart. They're not abusing you. They're loving you in some way. Um, 
while simultaneously you're losing outside perspective. So in cults, they really have this insular uh, point of view, this insular reality. They separate you in this group. They call the people in the group humanoids. They call the rest of reality, the rest of this reality, human. So human is, you know, all the other uh, mere mortals, and we are these special subspecies. Um called humanoids. So they separate you from the rest of the world. They keep you from, now they don't have to do this physically. And a lot of this subtlety is where people get confused because I mean, the leader of this group even wrote a paper or had someone write, you know, hired someone to write a paper about how they're not a cult, which by the way, red flag. If you have to do a whole PR campaign and run SEO ads, uh, Google ads and optimize your SEO about how you are not a cult, you might be a cult. Okay. Uh, that's a side note. So, <laughs> um, contrary to what this person, this leader puts out there, you don't have to be physically locked up. You know, people are doing that to themselves in their mind. Once you've, uh, indoctrinated them, right? You don't have to physically keep them from their families. When you tell them that family stands for effed up and mainly interested in limiting you, guess what that means? Family is not good and you should stay away from them. All of this subtlety, it it, it starts to erode your outside perspective and resources. So let's say you used to watch the news, you used to read other books other than that were put out by this cult. Uh, you used to get education from other places. The cult no longer rewards that. They only reward when you are giving them your time, energy, and money. So you start to lose outside perspective. You, you know, you find yourself unable to speak to people that are outside the cult. Like you have conversations, but you don't understand each other because you're having this totally like insular reality now where you can't talk to people outside. So you start to lose this outside perspective and you start to lose resources outside the cult. So you can no longer, uh, you know, work like my husband and I both worked for this cult. And so our income was completely wrapped up in it. Um, resources, time, they take away your time. They take all of your energy. You can't really spend a lot of time or money or energy on anything else. Like if you, especially if you're working for them, you don't take a holiday. You don't take weekends. You don't take nights off You up early. It's very common in, in all cults for especially people that work for the group to devote everything to them. So that's number one is <clears throat> no one joins a cult. They delay leaving organizations that misrepresented themselves. And we'll talk about how all the ways that this group is still misrepresenting themselves. Um, okay. Consent. <laughs> oh, that's it. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Number two, there are no solid predictors for who will stay who will join or who will stay in a cult, a high demand group or a coercive control relationship other than possibly. So this is, this is what researchers have found. There's nothing that will predict who will join or stay in like nothing that you would think, you know, your, your age, your gender, your uh, race, your socioeconomic status, like any of those, uh, even like whether you were, um, you know, brought up in a good family or you were abused or any of that stuff, there's no solid predictors for who will join or stay in a cult other than possibly one thing, and that is situational vulnerability. Situational vulnerability, just like it sounds, in that moment, wrong place, wrong time, you were vulnerable and you ran across someone who like got you into this uh, magical miraculous, wonderful solution. That's the best thing since sliced bread. Uh, that was the case for me when I found this group. I had uh, a lot of situational vulnerability. My brother had committed suicide at age 18. I thought, you know, the world is cruel and hideous and I don't even really believe in anything good anymore. Um, I was in an abusive relationship with a narcissist and I guess um, what this group would say is I was a seeker. So I was looking for something else. I was an acupuncturist, actually uh, quite well educated, have a master's degree and studied psychology in my undergrad 
um, and very successful career-wise and, you know, ran across someone who was a life coach who was doing this uh, work. And I thought, wow, that sounds like great uh, fun. And she seemed like she was really happy after going to some of these classes. And I also thought I could use the quote unquote tools with my acupuncture patients. It would help them and it would give me a way to do work that wasn't tied to my physical uh, practice with my patients. And I wanted to travel and do that. So it seemed to solve a lot of my problems. That's one of the red flags. You know, cults always have this magical, simple solution to everything. It's the one answer to all of your problems. And it's way easier than anything else you would do. And people seem to be very um, successful and happy. And, you know, of course, that would be the story that they would put out um, to get you in. All right. Uh, the content of the cult is not the point. So a lot of the questions I got were, you know, what about the tools? Do they work? Are they good? Are they not good? Are they problematic? And it's like the content of the cult, whether it's military, political, religious, self-help, uh, in this case, it was a self-help or a personal development group, which are really rampant right now for whatever reason. People are looking for, um, it's not even spiritual, but, you know, betterment. You know, you want to be a better person. Here's this one-stop shop for everything, whether it's money, relationships, your body, like business. We've got everything. We answer everything. So that uh, the content of the cult is not the point. It's the mechanism. So whether or not, you know, uh, you got some good things from it or not, and, and trying to sort out this sort of, uh, pile of like, this part was good and this part was bad. It can really help with your cognitive dissonance, meaning your part of your brain that wants to make sense of it. And it's not all making sense. So it can help with that, but it really does re delay your recovery time. And that's where I started was I was like, okay, I have to go through all of the tools and see which ones are real and which ones help. Cause I need these, I need something like, what am I going to do the next time I have a, a problem or I need to make a decision? Um, I need, you know, the tools, but that actually came from the teachings of this group was like, they're always propping up these tools. Like they're the best tools. You know, I owe my whole life to these tools. Like, it's not about the people, you know, you, maybe the people are bad, but the tools are great. And it's like, mm, it's not really about the, it's not about the content. It's not about the teachings. It's not about the tools. It's not about whether they were good or not. Um, it's like it's trying to separate the teacher from the teachings isn't really going to help you recover if you were a part of a unhealthy, toxic group like this. So recovering from it is going to be another chapter. Uh, there's a lot to that, but I would just maybe put a pin in that. And, you know, what I discovered from this, my personal takeaway is the stuff that worked was never created by them. The stuff that doesn't work it's just nonsense that they kind of made up to uh, brand it as their own um, for marketing purposes and copywriting. And it doesn't really, you can just kind of throw that away. Um, but yeah, the stuff that does work, it's nothing was original from this group. And I just keep finding other sources for things that I was told was created by this dude, but it never was. Um, all right. So number three, who are the leaders? It's not so in any group where there's a, a guru, guru or a cult leader, um, it's about the network, not it's not going to appeal to everyone. So the and there's also like the front organization is like what they're selling. And then there's all the problematic spheres that are running behind the scenes. So I think that's why people are, keep asking me what happened because I knew that I was behind the scenes and they want me to show them the smoking gun and like, here's this one thing that they did. That's why I left. And it's not that simple. There's many, 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 many problematic things that they were doing and are still doing. And the only simple thing I can tell you why I left is that I woke up and I saw the man behind the curtain. And I, once you, once you see the man behind the curtain, you can't, unsee it. And then it's sort of like that, um, the sixth sense, the movie. And when you find out that, you know, the main guy 
spoiler alert, uh, was dead and is a ghost, you start thinking about the entire movie again. You go like, oh, and you see it all like a totally different movie. It's like that when you realize this group isn't like the deception. Once you see it, you you go through every event, every conversation, every decision, all of it, you see it in a totally different way. And for me, there's no putting the lid back on that. Like I would never go back. I would never, ever go back. That's just, um, yeah. Why? Uh, okay. So the thing about like, it's about the spheres of influence that radiate out from the leadership. It's not about who the actual leader is like Tony Robbins. A lot of people will be turned off by, but some people will appeal. He'll appeal to a certain demographic. Um, <clears throat> it's more about the network and what is being created, the methods and the systems around this leader than the leader or leaders themselves. Although you will find uh, in this group and in all cults that the leader themselves himself usually is a man uh is is the like it trickles down so a lot of the modeling of bad behavior starts with the guy at the top and then all the people that are close closest to him are like seeing that as okay and doing it to other people and actually perpetrating the abuse uh, number four, they exploit the best parts of you as a human being. So wanting to work on yourself, wait, wanting to save the planet or make the world a better place, they will exploit that desire. It is a good thing that you have in you and they will exploit that to their own ends. And again, cults always exploit the people that they there's something valuable in them that they're going to use to their own advantage. Um, Five, everyone recruited into a cult is defrauded of time and energy. So you will be defrauded of time and energy in a cult. And I absolutely was. I think the one thing that I am still trying to get over, well, there's many things, um, but I'm grieving those 12 years that I wish I had spent doing something that was not a fraud. And... um so oftentimes the group is obsessed with sex and that reason is, uh, other than the leaders wanting to use their uh, position of power to coerce people into having sex with them, which is another thing that they do, um, it's to mess with your relationships and the intimate bonds that aren't the bonds that you're supposed to have with the cult and the cult leader or leaders. So any closeness that you have outside with anyone outside the group or even inside the group actually definitely inside the group um they will try and mess with those connections because the only true real bond that they want you to have is with the cult itself and the cult the leader or leaders of that cult so you are defrauded of time and energy meaning you devote an inordinate amount of time and energy to them uh, over everything else. And that was definitely the case for us. I mean, yeah, working 24 seven, like I, when I was pregnant with twins, falling asleep on my laptop, literally face down because I'm working 17, 18 hour days, um, going to classes all day long, working lunches, and then working after the class, because you have to still get your regular job done. And then going to the class is your job too. So it's like the amount of time and energy you're spending. And then, oh, you know, they even give you these recordings to listen to at night, which is like just further um, basically like hypnotic sort of like implantation of things. It's like, so you're still like hearing it, things on a loop, literally they're like play this on a loop. Um, and they think that's good. They teach you that that's good. So then you start to like clear stuff, which is not actually clearing stuff. And spiritual bypass is one of the topics I'll talk about in another episode. Um, but that's basically what that is doing because you feel better. You think you're healing something or you're getting to some greater awareness, um, but you're actually just doing spiritual bypass. 
Uh, number six, necessary components of the cultic or organization. Okay, these three came from, um, I think, Kathleen Mann again, and that is deception, dependence, and dread of leaving. So deception, they have to lie to you and the public about what they're doing um, all the time. And we would even know that they were lying, but we would justify the lies because we thought that there was some greater good that they were doing. So the leader of this group, nicknamed himself like the manipulator and tells everyone that it's such a great thing that he's such a manipulator everyone knows that he's manipulating but they reframe the idea and the word and the concept of manipulation as if it is a good thing so um they are lying to you and the public about what they're doing so in this group and this is part of the thing that woke me up was i realized nothing that i had thought we were striving for this big mission to like create consciousness on the planet nothing was ever done like and there was all these fundraisers and charities and actual charities that were turned in like nonprofits that were turned into profits uh how is that legal uh anyway so you're devoting yourself and helping them create funds to supposedly go to these big sweeping things that are going to change the world because again you're a good person and you want to do good in the world and you think like I'm gonna devote this to them because they can do more with it than just me by myself uh but you are being lied to about where that money is going and and when I realized I was like okay hang on what have they actually created and I couldn't come up with one thing that wasn't a profitable self-serving creation on this planet not one and I was like wow what have I been doing all this time you know and looking past so many abuses and looking past being mistreated and not even realizing that I was being mistreated which you know when you um are being abused uh yeah you mistake sometimes again the idea of abuse you misidentify as love and caring so when I realized deception wow like not one thing that I have been contributing to has actually been created on this planet I kind of they call it the shelf breaking like that was the last straw just all crumbled dependence um so deception dependence uh dependence is you create all of your support structures, your friendships, your finances, your um, where you go for help, advice, like everything that would allow you to, you know, survive and thrive is wrapped up in this cult. So you become very dependent on it. The idea of leaving is way harder, way more scary, way more stressful than just staying. And so that's one reason. Also, the sunken cost fallacy uh, is a thing that, like, if you're gambling and you've already put in ten thousand dollars, like, you're gonna do another hundred because you're like, I can't even like, you know, it's coming. It's gotta pay off. It's gotta pay off. And the idea of like actually seeing, like, no, I've just lost all that money in gambling. It's the same thing with with cults. Like you become dependent on it, and you don't want to really like wake up to the fact that, yeah. I was deceived and rather than putting like another day, I'm leaving. It's much harder than just staying. So if you have left, you're very brave. And most people, um, it takes something drastic, you know, to get them out. Uh, okay. Dependence and dread of leaving. So another characteristic of cults is that they, when someone leaves, they are shunned. They are, uh, to told lies about, you know, there's always some story about how they're like in our group, when someone left, uh, it was never the case that they just went off and had a great life. It was like, at best, they were going, you know, back to this reality, like, oh, they got what they were, you know, came for. And that was sort of like the subtext is, well, you know, that's all, that's the best they could do. 
and we're better than they are because we're still here and we're still choosing more and choosing greater, but they got what they came for. That was like best case scenario. And then a lot of times someone who would speak out was um, just blatantly, um, uh, yeah, they're destroyed. Their, their reputation is destroyed. So they'll tell lies about that person so that um, you feel more justified in staying. So they're telling the lies to the people who are still in. So they feel like, all oh, right, I'm making the right decision because I'm staying. So they'll also give you um, the idea that they have some power over, or some t- in some cults, they actually do pursue these people um, with you know legal action or uh, threats, or they come after them physically all of that stuff. So you, and in this group, what was more common is, uh, you know, they give a lot of mystical power to the leader. So they would tell stories about like bad things happening to that person or their family. So if someone left and then let's say later someone in their family or themselves, you know, got cancer or fell off a horse, hit their head, got a concussion, it would be like, (laughs) well, you know, don't mess with us or him, it was in particular the leader, don't mess with the, and then you put in his first name. That was like, ha, ha, ha. And he would chuckle about it. Like he was the one who caused it. So over, you know, imagine a decade or more of hearing of stories of people whose lives were destroyed after leaving, you start to develop a dread of leaving. And that's something a lot of people that come to me and that have left or are thinking of leaving, they are very scared to do so because they think something bad is going to happen to them. Um, it's not, it's not true. This is a tactic. So deception, dependence, and dread of leaving. So they don't have that power over you, but obviously when you are in uh, a cult, you give them your power. So you think that it does. You think that they do. Okay, so this is cult 101. Those are the primary aspects. Uh, probably get into the different models in other episodes because this is a lot and I need to take a break. And another thing that I'm uh, learning about is regulating my nervous system and also just recovering from CPTSD, which is a complex post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, not just from the attacks that they did on me when I left, but um, the entire time that I was in there being abused. All right. Hope this was helpful. If so, please share with someone who you want to uh, let know about this and uh, comment. Let me know how it was and I'll talk to you next time.